What makes combat good in an MMORPG? Is it the freedom of movement, the unique abilities each class has access to, the weight of weapons your character is wielding, or perhaps the way players choose to attack via systems like tab targeting and action combat? Combat is the essential system in every game. Whether it's an action RPG, a role-playing game, or a massively multiplayer online RPG, it is something that can really make or break the entire experience if done wrong. Out of all of these systems and games, combat will be the one every player uses the most as they literally cut their path through to end game content or to complete whatever mission it is they're on. For Ashes of Creation, combat is one of those things that in the beginning, they really seem to struggle to get right. If you haven't followed the game closely, well, then last time you tuned in, maybe you didn't think combat looked fun at all. Maybe it really turned you off from this MMO. Over the last seven years, we have seen many iterations of Intrepid's take on combat as they have gone from Alpha Zero to Apocalypse to Alpha 1 and beyond as they strive to nail down the perfect hybrid system that feels good in both tab and action mode. Yes, I said tab, target, and action combat mode. Intrepid is taking a more unique approach to combat within Ashes of Creation, something that a lot of MMOs stray away from. Their goal is to give a good balance between the tab targeting combat like you'd find in games such as World of Warcraft and the action combat from games such as New World, while allowing players to seamlessly switch between the two stances, allowing them to choose what feels right for their playstyle. Intrepid's goal for combat when it comes to Ashes of Creation is for it to focus on strategy, wanting players to think about their next moves and have the actual combat feel responsive, mobile, and fluid. And now, after seven years of development and many iterations, Intrepid has finally appeared to get combat in a place where it's setting a solid path forward through the Alpha 2 testing phase and beyond. The original direction of this hybrid system was straightforward, giving players a selection of both action combat and tab targeting abilities, allowing them to spec into the ones they want, really bringing their playstyle towards one direction or another, or perhaps meeting somewhere in the middle. If you want the majority of your abilities to be tab, well you could spec into them that way. If you want the majority majority to be action, this is also your choice in something that's mostly doable, although you won't be able to go 100% in either direction. And while the designs in this system is still the case and still how Intrepid is planning to make it, you may not see that much variety when we head into Alpha 2. The level cap itself is only 35 at the start of testing, so you won't have nearly all of these skills available to you that you may find come launch. When you jump into Alpha 2, or perhaps watch your favorite streamer participate, you may notice that there are two different camera types. The first being the tab camera, which allows you to cycle through targets, hard locking onto them like you normally would in the traditional tab target MMO. When you tab select your target, you can just cast that ability and boom, damage is done towards that enemy you had tab selected. With this, you have the more traditional camera setup where you can click and drag with the camera with your mouse to get the direction you desire while playing. The second camera is called the action camera. When activated, the camera is now tied to the cursor movement instead of a click and a drag, and a reticle appears on the screen. The reticle allows you to freely swing your weapon to where you desire, which is something you may find yourself doing quite often. Often. Intrepid doesn't quite have an auto attack like you'd expect, but instead has a base level attack that you can cast from either clicking the cast key in tab target setup or clicking and swinging your attack with your mouse, which is what gives your base attacks a bit more of an action combat feel. For targeting, action combat has what is called soft and hard locking. Soft locking is when the reticle moves over a target where you can then cast abilities at this target. This soft lock will be indicated by a slightly grayed out targeting plate, but if the reticle moves away from that target or the target moves away from the reticle, the target is now gone. Hard locking is what resolves this issue, and when you want to hone in on a specific target, you can right mouse click on that target you have soft locked to hard lock it. The targeting plate will then no longer be grayed out, and you can use tab to cycle hard locked targets within proximity, so you don't have to keep switching stances. Skill wise, each class has a variety of templated skills, which allow for free aim and action mode, and targeted skills which require you to have a softer hard lock target to cast. Some of these abilities can even be body blocked, which means if you are free aim casting an ability and someone moves in the way it could hit that player instead of your target. If you want a complete breakdown on each action and tab target ability, the Ashes of Creation wiki is a good place where you can check that out. If you are a ranged user such as a mage or a ranger in action combat, well don't expect any perks when it 
comes to landing a headshot on an opponent, as Intrepid has stated that there will be no headshot mechanics or anything along those lines. Going into Alpha 2, the time to kill, or TTK, in a 1v1 PvP setting is expected to be between 10 and 30 seconds for the same level equivalent geared player. But this can obviously vary on archetypes, as Intrepid isn't planning to have each class balanced on a 1v1 level, but more on group gameplay, and they are focusing heavily on something they are calling the Rock Paper Scissors method. Meaning, while a mage might be strong against a cleric in most instances, there is always going to be that rogue out there that can easily rip apart the mage, but that rogue may also struggle against fighting that same cleric the mage easily defeated. Each archetype will have its place in the party, but going out solo you may struggle at times depending on who you are up against. For non-elite PvE mobs when going out solo, the time to kill is expected to be approximately 6 seconds, which personally seems a bit fast for me, but is something that I'll have a better feel for when I get my hands on Alpha 2. Keep in mind though that any of this discussed could change at any point as we are playing a game that is in very active development. With combat mobility, Ashes of Creation's combat has split body animations, where your character's upper body can be locked by weapon animations while the lower body is free to continue moving. Basically, this means that you won't have to deal with anything like an animation that locks you, keeping you in place when attacking. Your legs will still move around freely while your upper body carries through the movements, something that we had and then was removed again, and then brought back because combat just didn't feel right without it. Most class abilities are capable of being cast while on the move, but may slow your movement down during cast, as you can see with this Mage Blizzard ability that even while channeling you could slowly move around, which should really help with combat feeling more fun and fast paced. There will be rare instances where players are locked in place for casting, but this is something that may be reserved for the most powerful of abilities, giving it a counter to the massive payoff that is about to be cast. There is also said to be a chance that weapon weight may affect player mobility as well, but this doesn't seem to be implemented and may have changed completely. Player movement in combat will also include things such as sprinting, with every archetype having access to it, and no, you should no longer see this ugly wind effect when sprinting that everybody hated in Alpha 1. There is also mantling over edges, which is something that was introduced with Unreal Engine 5. All archetypes will also have the ability to unlock active dodging and active blocking abilities, which may consume stamina on use. Active blocking won't be locked to shields either, as any weapon type will have a parry feature that can lessen the damage, but it won't be as effective as that shield. Different weapon types slash equipment can cater towards different damage types, such as shields blocking direct melee damage, and sigils that are better for blocking magic damage. Ashes of Creation, while it still has a very long way to go when it comes to its development, has shown with its many previews that they are actively listening and responding to player feedback on all things, especially combat, and it is just going to continue to get better as we get further into Alpha 2 and move ahead on that road towards launch, and I cannot wait to see where it ends up.